If you, the person watching this video found out you had supernatural abilities and were asked to join a special defense agency and use your powers for good, what would you do? The main character of this story is in a similar situation, stick around and find out what happens. A protagonist, a sushi, is lying by the riverbank, starving to the point of death. He's been fantasizing about food but is too scared to steal. He is determined to survive no matter what, so he decides to rob the first person he sees to avoid starvation. He turns and sees a speeding motorcycle and a couple of military men running down the street, but he's too scared to approach them. Almost immediately, he sees a man floating upside down in the river. Although he is hesitant, he eventually dives in and saves him. The strange man regains consciousness, but he is clearly unhappy to be alive, which confuses Itsushi. The man introduces himself as Dazai and begins scolding Itsushi. He claims he wanted to commit a clean suicide. After that, he apologizes for causing Itsushi trouble, and offers to make it up to him by buying food. Suddenly, Dazai's colleague Kinikita shows up across the river and yells at Dazai for ruining his perfect schedule. Dazai then uses this opportunity to invite Itsushi to eat at the expense of Kunikita. As Itsushi eats his tea on rice, Kunikita scolds Dazai and complains about having him as a partner. Itsushi thanked them for feeding him and says he hadn't eaten since he got kicked out of his orphanage. He asks about their job, and Kunikita says that they are members of the Armed Detective Agency, an organization of individuals with supernatural powers that they only use in unique cases that the police or military can't handle. The detective duo begins to discuss their next mission. Capturing a white tiger that has been ravaging livestock and warehouses. Asushi seems uncomfortable with the subject and tries to run away, but Kunikita catches him and asks if he has seen a white tiger roaming around town. Asushi panics and claims the tiger has been following him, looking to kill him. He narrates how the tiger destroyed his orphanage, and due to financial issues, he was kicked out so they would have fewer mouths to feed. Dazai then suggests that Asushi be used as bait to capture the tiger. Asushi refuses but accepts as soon as Dazai promises to reward him afterward. Dazai and Itsushi sit in an empty warehouse waiting for the tiger to arrive. Itsushi is nervous while Dazai is relaxed, reading his book, The Complete Guide to Suicide. Dazai assures Itsushi that he'll protect him. They hear a loud noise which freaks Itsushi out. Luckily, it's a false alarm. Dazai suddenly unlocks his inner Batman and begins to deduce the reason Itsushi got kicked out of the orphanage. He wonders why the orphanage would ban just one child if they were trying to save money. Itsushi is confused. Dazai recalls Itsushi saying the tiger destroyed the orphanage, and as soon as he was thrown out and left for the city, the strange beast followed him. He also figured out that the tiger appeared in the city around the same time as Itsushi, and concludes that Itsushi is the tiger. Almost immediately, Itsushi begins to transform into a powerful white tiger under the moonlight. The tiger instantly attacks Dazai, who reveals his supernatural ability, no longer human, which allows him to nullify other abilities with a single touch. He immediately touches Itsushi, now the wild beast, and restores him to normal. Kunikita arrives at the scene with reinforcement and sees Itsushi unconscious on the ground. Dazai informs him that Itsushi is the tiger they are looking for. They wonder what to do since the wild beast is just a little boy unaware of his abilities. Dazai suggests that Itsushi be recruited into the special detective agency. Itsushi wakes up and has no memory of transforming. He sees that his right hand is still a giant paw and starts to freak out. Dazai interrupts him and announces that Itsushi will be joining their detective agency. Itsushi wakes up in a dorm room a while later, wondering if it was all a dream. He slowly remembers the events of the previous day, and comments that it has been a long time since he slept under a roof. Suddenly, he receives a call from Dazai who claims that there's an emergency, and he needs his urgent attention. Itsushi rushes down the stairs to find Dazai trapped in an oil barrel. He's perplexed and wonders what's going on. He discovered that it is another one of Dazai's suicide attempts gone wrong. Atsushi appears confused, but once again saves Dazai from himself. Atsushi asks why Dazai didn't call anyone else to help him, but Dazai said they all told him congratulations and wished him luck. Atsushi doubts he'll be of any good use to the armed detective agency, since he has no control over his powers, and is destructive whenever he transforms. He doesn't consider himself as gifted as the rest of the team, and explains that he would rather look for a job and have a simple start. Dazai then offers to help him get a suitable job, and Itsushi agrees. On their way, Itsushi and Dazai run into Kunikita, who informs them that a man has taken the agency hostage, and is threatening to blow up the building. They sneak into the building and see that Naomi, a part-time worker, is tied up next to the bomber, who is furious, demanding to see the president of the agency. Itsushi is frightened and asks to leave because he does not think he would be helpful. Dazai refuses and asks him to stay. Dazai and Kunikita play a game of rock-paper-scissors to determine who will confront the suicide bomber. Kunikita loses and proceeds to negotiate with the bomber. The bomber seems to know the ability of every detective in the agency, so he immediately orders Kunikita to get on all fours on the tables. 
He does this, and it renders him unable to do anything else. Dazai tells Itsushi that the bomber has done his research on everyone in the agency, so he knows all their powers. He explains that it's now up to him to save the agency as the bomber knows nothing about him. Itsushi disguises himself as a newspaper boy to distract the bomber, and give Dazai enough time to think of a plan. Itsushi approaches the man and tells him the consequences of blowing up the place. The bomber doesn't seem moved and proceeds with his threats. Itsushi begins narrating to the bomber how he has never had it easy in life, but has never had a reason to want to take his life or anyone else's. He keeps talking and manages to distract the bomber. This allows Kunikita to use his power, Dabopoe to disarm him. It seems like this power allows Kunikita to create anything he writes about. The bomber manages to regain possession of the detonator and presses it immediately. The timer goes off, sending everyone in the room into a panic. Atsushi recalls Dazai telling him that the only way to reduce the impact is to cover the bomb. He immediately throws himself over the bomb, just as it's about to go off to protect everyone else. The bomb does not go off. Atsushi discovers that the entire scene was a test to see if he is worthy of joining the armed detective agency. The bomber, Tanizaki, is an assistant at the agency, and the hostage is his sister. The president, Fukuzawa Yukichi, enters the room and congratulates Atsushi on passing the test, admitting that he had doubts about him at first. He goes on to say that the decision to join is entirely up to Dazai, and Dazai makes Atsushi an official member of the team. The other detectives applaud Atsushi's bravery. Despite his objections, he agrees to join because he has no other option since he's unskilled and has nowhere else to go. Atsushi is a bit crazy for covering the bomb with his body, but that shows he's a good person and cares about others. Stick around to find out what happens next. Rises to Atsushi for acting impolitely. He introduces himself as an assistant at the agency alongside his sister Naomi. Atsushi is a bit confused about their relationship, but Naomi insists they are siblings, and begins to tickle her brother. Meanwhile, Kunikita is strangling Dazai for asking a shop owner to strangle him. Atsushi then asks what their past occupations were, and so he was asked to participate in a guessing game where he guesses everyone's previous occupation. He correctly guesses that Tanizaki and Aomi were school students, and guesses that Kunikita was a government employee. Dazai informs him that Kunikita was formerly a math instructor, and challenges him to guess his former profession accurately for a whopping 700,000 yen. Atsushi accepts the challenge and makes a few random attempts before Tanizaki interrupts him with a call regarding a client at the agency. The female client says she recently noticed a suspicious group lurking in the vicinity of her company. Kunikita thinks they may be smugglers since they are located in a poor town. She asks for their assistance in keeping an eye on her company building's back alley. Kunikita instructs Atsushi to stake out the place and asks Tanizaki to join him. This will be his first actual mission. Kunikita then advises Atsushi to run away if he ever encounters the ruthless mafia, Akutagawa. He goes on to say that Akutagawa is not someone he wants to deal with. Akutagawa is shown entering a police station with a bag he claims he found and wishes to return. The officers request that he fill out a lost and found form, but as he approaches, they recognize him as a wanted fugitive. He effortlessly slaughters them with his powers before they can stop him. The bag he came in with explodes as soon as he exits the building. Atsushi, Tanizaki, Naomi, and their client, Higuchi, arrive at the location. Tanizaki is confused and comments that the place they were at is a dead end, and that smugglers normally have an escape route. Higuchi immediately informs her colleague, Akutagawa, that she has cornered the targets, which shocks the detectives. She led them into a trap. Higuchi admits to being a member of the Port Mafia, and immediately begins shooting at them. Naomi defends her brother with her body and collapses to the ground. Tanizaki freaks out as Naomi collapses to the floor. Angrily, he activates his ability, Light Snow, and tries to kill Higuchi, but gets stabbed in the back by Akutagawa. Akutagawa introduces himself to Atsushi and tells him he is the one they want, referring to him as Weridiger. Akutagawa threatens to devour Atsushi's leg with his power, Rashomon if he doesn't surrender. However, Atsushi notices that his colleagues are still alive, and even though he is scared, he attacks and takes up the gun to shoot Akutagawa, but Rashomon ate all the bullets. Akutagawa explains that his power devours everything in the space that tries to attack him, and then uses Rashomon to slash Atsushi's leg. Atsushi falls to the floor and cries as he recollects the cruel treatment he used to receive at the orphanage. This activates his power, causing him to transform into the tiger. This also made his leg regenerate. Atsushi and Akutagawa fight until Dazai appears and cancels their abilities with his no longer human ability, leaving Atsushi unconscious. Dazai reveals that during their first meeting, he saw through Higuchi's act and placed a microphone in her pocket. He goes on to say that he had been listening to everything. Higuchi attempts to shoot Dazai but is stopped by Akutagawa, who advises them to leave and return another day. He assures Dazai that he will capture the Weridiger and sell him on the black market for a whopping 7 billion yen, due to the bounty on Atsushi. 
Biguchi threatens Dazai and the agency, but Dazai is unconcerned, claiming he knows what the Port Mafia is capable of. Akutagawa confirms this, revealing that Dazai was once a member of the Port Mafia. <laughs> Sushi wakes up scared after his encounter with the Mafia. He recalls the events of the previous day and asks about Naomi and Tanizaki. Kanekita assures him that they are in good hands and being treated by Dr. Yasano. We see Tanizaki being treated, but it seems more like torture with a happy ending. Kunikita advises him not to panic despite having a 7 billion yen bounty on his head. Atsushi notices Kunikita's desperate attempt to hide his nervousness and suspects that he must be putting the agency in grave danger by being there. Kunikita warns him that the mafia will soon return for him and advises him to do something before the situation gets out of hand. Before he leaves he asks Atsushi if he knows where his glasses are. During a mafia operation, Hiratsu Ryuru, a member of the Port Mafia who possesses supernatural abilities, leads an infiltration at a worker's base, suspected of selling Port Mafia cargo on the black market. Hiratsu instructs his allies to murder the workers after discovering proof that confirmed their suspicions. The base is later blown up after the massacre. Atsushi goes to the scene as the cops show up and learns from the crowd that the massacre was carried out by a dangerous squad known as the Black Lizards. He fears for the safety of his team. Atsushi decides to leave the agency because he believes they'll soon attack it. He calls Higuchi and tells her he's leaving the agency and challenges her to come after him, assuming that doing so will protect the agency from harm. He packs his things and leaves the agency with the hopes that the black lizards would come after him and spare the others. He runs into Kunikita and bids him a confused farewell. Higuchi gathers the members of the black lizard squad which consists of Hiratsu, Commander Tachiwara Michizu, and Commander Jin, in a dark alley. They all possess supernatural abilities, and she orders them to destroy the agency to prevent them from protecting its sushi. Meanwhile, the Kudagawa visits a girl who is being held captive and proceeds to harm her. He eventually decides to let her live after observing her unwavering willpower, even as he attacks her. When the Black Lizard gang arrives, they burst through the agency's front entrance and immediately begin firing their weapons. At sushi, not too far from the building, hears gunshots and notices it is coming from the agency's direction. He is terrified, thinking he has lost them. He immediately rushes back in panic. When he returns to the agency, he finds that Kunikita, Kenji, and Yusano have effectively defeated the enemies. Come on, man! That's too easy! Atsushi is relieved as he was expecting the exact opposite. The black lizards lay unconscious on the ground. Kunikita complains about the costs of fixing up the mess made by the raiders, and instructs one of the members to throw them out the window. Atsushi gets scolded by Kunikita for abandoning his post despite now being a member of the agency. Atsushi is amazed and concludes that the agency might even be more brutal than the Port Mafia. He begins to cry because he thought that Kunikita wanted him to leave the agency when he asked him to do what he can. Kunikita teases Atsushi for crying, however, he makes an effort to keep his tears hidden from Kunikita and the others. While the agency cleans up after the Black Lizard raid, Rampo, a member of the armed detective agency, asks a female worker to get a marble out of a bottle. She smashes the glass bottle and exposes the marble, which she picks up and hands to Rampo. Atsushi, who is organizing some books, is irritated as he watches them admire the marble. He's confused and asks Kunikita why Rampo isn't helping with the cleaning. Rampo stands up and informs Kunikita that the police have asked him to assist with the murder investigation. He then begins to boast about his alter deduction ability, claiming that the police force cannot function without him, and that everyone relies on him. It's the agency's best ability, he adds. Kunikita unironically praises Rampo and expresses the agency's gratitude to him. Rampo goes on to say that everyone else in the agency does not have the combined deductive ability of a single monkey, and everyone else praises his ability. Kunikita then assigns Atsushi to accompany Rampo on the murder investigation, informing them that they will travel by train. Rampo says he doesn't need an assistant, but would only allow Atsushi to accompany him, because he doesn't know how to board trains. They arrive at the crime scene and meet Officer Minara, who tells them their help is no longer needed. Rampo thinks it's ridiculous, and claims a mastermind like himself should oversee every case. Minara informs them that the victim is his subordinate, Yamagiwa, who was found floating in the river that morning. He adds that she was shot three times, and there are no leads. Almost immediately, the police notified them that their net has caught another person. Atsushi suspects that another person was murdered and thrown into the river. The net is drawn from the river, and everyone rushes to the scene. Atsushi is disappointed to see that it is only Dazai attempting to drown himself. Dazai says that he was drifting along when the net caught him, and he no longer wishes to commit a single suicide, but instead prefers to die with a beautiful lady. Dazai sees the dead body and laments, claiming she could have committed a double suicide with him. Minara reminds Rampo that he doesn't need their help because he believes his men are superior to them. 
To put this claim to the test, Rampo challenges Minara's fellow officer, Sergeant Tsujimoto, to solve the case in 60 seconds, saying if he's as good as Minara claims, he should be able to do it. Tsujimoto attempts this and links the murder to the Port Mafia. Dazai disagrees, claiming that the Port Mafia always leave their victims with a distinct signature. He says that the person is made to bite a curb, after which they stomp on his head, shattering his jaw, before turning him over and shooting him three times in the chest. Minaura then asks Rampo to prove himself instead of discrediting the value of the police. Rampo puts on his glasses, unlocks his inner Batman, and activates Ultra Deduction. He claims that the murderer is Tsujimoto. Tsujimoto is nervous and desperately denies Rampo's claims. Rampo requests Tsujimoto's gun, which should be missing exactly three bullets. Rampo explains that it is very difficult for civilians or police to get spare ammo in their city. Tsujimoto, who is now terrified, remains silent. Minara orders him to submit his weapon. Tsujimoto slowly reaches for his gun and immediately points it at Rampo. However, Atsushi restrains him. Rampo continues his deduction, correctly identifying the location of the crime scene and the time the murder happened. As Tsujimoto is interrogated at the station, they discover that he is a spy for a corrupt Diet member. He explains that Yamagiwa had incriminating evidence on the Diet member, and he was asked to retrieve it. Tsujimoto confronted Yamagiwa and begged her to give him the evidence for her safety. Yamagiwa refused, so he threatened to commit suicide unless she provided the evidence. Yamagiwa had tried to stop him, but he accidentally shot her. He explains how he ran to the Diet member he works for, explaining what happened and asking for assistance. He is told to fire two more shots to make it appear like the Port Mafia is to blame. Then, to delay the discovery of the body, he throws her body into the river. Rampo reveals that her last words to him were, I'm sorry. Astounded, Tsujimoto wonders how he knows. Minara thanks Rampo for his assistance and apologizes for his earlier behavior. Rampo jokes about giving him a discount the next time he's needed for a case investigation. On their way back to the agency, Dazai tells Atsushi that Rampo has no ability, he simply uses his intelligence and deduction to solve cases. Dazai goes on to say that he was initially skeptical, but was proven wrong when he secretly touched Rampo's hair, while Rampo was activating his alter deduction. He was curious to see if his no longer human could cancel Rampo's ability, which it doesn't. Dazai was surprised to see Rampo still solve the case in seconds, leading him to conclude that Rampo has no ability, he just thinks he does, which is why the agency regards him so highly. Atsushi questions Dazai on how Rampo solved the case in seconds despite his lack of ability. According to Dazai, Sergeant Tsujimoto provided clues that made it so obvious. Rampo knew the time of the murder because the body was still in good condition, so the lazy Wa not dead for long. He further reveals that both Yamagiwa and Officer Tsujimoto wore the same wristwatch, indicating they were in a relationship. That was why he couldn't kick her head in to make it seem like the Port Mafia's job. <laughs> Where they meet a cyber criminal hired by Kunikita to investigate the source of an anonymous tip regarding the case. The spy inquires why Kunikita is late, and teases him about being on a date. Kunikita then says he will only marry a chosen woman who he has dated for six years, because that's what his notebook says. He introduces himself to Itsushi as Rakuzo Taguchi, and lets him know that he can dig up dirt on anyone for the right price. Taguchi informs them that the anonymous tip came from an individual called the Azure Messenger. Kunikita and the gang decide to go investigate the care further. Kunikita then orders a taxi to take him to the abandoned hospital the informant had specified. Itsushi is introduced to the driver, who is also an agency informant. He says he saw two of the 11 victims right before they were abducted. Dazai notices that two of the victims wore glasses, and told Kunikita that it's his time to shine as an abductee. They begin to fight, but the taxi reaches their destination, which is an abandoned hospital. As they investigate the hospital, they hear a lady screaming for help. They rush to the basement, where they find a woman in her underwear drowning in a glass tank. Kunikita immediately shoots at the glass and saves the woman, who tells them her name is Nabuko Sasaki. She also informs them that there seem to be other abducted people at the hospital. The group locates the captives and tries to help them, but gas is suddenly released in their chamber. Kunikita tries to save them, but Dazai drags him out of the room, shouting that they can't help them. News reaches the agency that the gas killed all captives. Kunikita reads a newspaper article about the agency's failure to save the victims of the Yokohama serial disappearances. The group visits Sasaki in the infirmary, who thanks them for saving her life. She reveals that she stayed at Dazai's house, which shocks Kunikita and Itsushi. While the agents are working, Dazai teases Kunikita about liking Sasaki, and also teases him about his ideal woman. They bicker for a while before Kunikita realizes who the possible perpetrator of the crime is. Kunikita immediately calls the cab driver. Unaware of Kunikita's realization, the cab driver inquires where they should go next. Kunikita accuses him bluntly of being the kidnapper behind the abductions. 
He denies but as they pinpoint his motives and connections to organ traffickers, the cab driver admits and asks for protection, in exchange for turning himself in. The cab driver explains that it wasn't his idea. He goes on to say that he was approached by organ smugglers who assured him he'd never be caught. He further explains that he needs their protection because one of the people he abducted belonged to the Port Mafia. Suddenly, the Port Mafia show up and begin firing at their cab. The cab driver runs away out of fear. Kunikita instructs Dazai to pursue the cab driver, claiming they won't get any evidence if they lose him. Atsushi is told to contact backup. Kunikita takes on the Port Mafia by creating a flashbang with his ability. This distracts the shooters. Suddenly, a Kutagawa appears and attacks Kunikita. They battle fiercely, and Kunikita shoots a gun in his opponent's direction. This breaks a water pipe, which douses Akutagawa. He then creates a stun gun and uses it to electrocute Akutagawa. However, their fight is cut short when the police arrive. Akutagawa retreats, and Kunikita tells him not to return. Later on, Dazai informs Kunikita that the cab driver has been handed to the police. The group proceeds to the traffickers' alleged meeting location. The building turns out to be the Azure King's hideout from years ago, where he blew himself up with five detectives, after Kunikita revealed his location to the police. One of the detectives was Rakizu's father, and Kunikita believes he is responsible for the bomb's detonation because of his report. Dazai explains to Itsushi that Kunikita has been acting as a surrogate father to Rakizu due to his guilt. At that point, they receive a request from a client, who turns out to be the Azure messenger, to disarm a bomb, explaining that failure to do so would result in the deaths of hundreds. Kunikita assures Asushi that the bomb will be found and deactivated, and that no one will be harmed. <laughs> agency gathers to discuss the Azure Messenger's bomb threat. Kunikita reads out a message sent to the agency by the Azure Messenger, who wished them luck in finding and disarming the bomb. One of the agents believes the bomb was rigged to harm the agency's reputation. She claims that if they do not disarm the bomb, the public will hold them accountable. One of the agents suggests that they contact Rampo for assistance on the case. He is informed Ranpo is out of town on another case, but has been instructed to contact them as soon as possible. The agency's president, Fukuzawa, asks Kunikita if he received any information about the bomb from the cab driver. Kunikita tells him the cab driver claims he knows nothing about it, and that he believes him. The president then informs the crew that their priority is to uncover the identity of the Azure messenger, and deactivate the bomb. He explains that failing to find and disarm the bomb, will cost innocent lives, and tarnish the agency's reputation. Kunikita contacts Taguchi, the cyber hacker, and requests that he find out who the Azure messenger is. He also instructs him to trace the bomb building equipment. Meanwhile, Dazai is out on a date with Sasaki, the woman they rescued from the abandoned hospital. Kunikita and Itsushi visit him, and he is scolded for missing the meeting. Dazai claims he's fully aware of what the emergency meeting was all about. Nevertheless, he asks for Sasaki's opinion on the Azure messenger, from the perspective of a social psychology teacher. She suggests that the Azure Messenger might be the Azure King claiming it's possible that he faked his death and is currently seeking revenge. Dazai backs up this claim, advising Kunikita to be cautious because the Azure King may be after him. Kunikita assures them that the Azure King died a long time ago. He further explains that the military police confirmed his death through a forensic test. Kunikita throws a jealous fit, demanding to know why Dazai gets to keep a beautiful woman like Sasaki at his home. Dazai concludes that Kunikita has a crush on Sasaki and teases him. He then shows Sasaki Kunikita's criteria for an ideal woman, and her response crushes him. Atsushi interrupts them and says he received a message from Ranpo, saying he's willing to help them. Over the phone, Ranpo teases his co-workers about their inability to solve the case without him. Ranpo then deduces that the bomb is planted at a fishing tackle store in Nijishi. On their way, Kunikita and Atsushi are contacted by Taguchi and Ranpo, telling them that the real bomb is located at a former Defense Force facility. President Fukuzawa also contacts Dazai, and informs him that the cab driver has died. The three go to the defense facility, where the enemy ambushes them. Kunikita distracts the shooters with a flashbang, and sends Dazai and Itsushi to search for the transmitter. Kunikita fights off the shooters but is confronted by an ability user. The user explains that his ability allows him to control anyone, anywhere if they have a number. He immediately breaks the key to the transmitter, informing Kunikita of their inevitable demise. Meanwhile, Dazai and Asushi locate the transmitter, but they don't have the key to turn it off. They are up against a huge and powerful opponent. With Dazai and Asushi unable to physically combat the man and Kunikita trapped in the user's number ability, Kunikita and Dazai switch places using a wire gun. Dazai nullifies the user's ability, while Kunikita defeats the opponent. Kunikita also recreates the release key through Dapo Poet and successfully disarms the bomb. He explains to Itsushi that he has the ability to recreate any object he sees and knows its use, as long as it's less than the size of his book. A while later, Sasaki runs into Kunikita at the cemetery. He is visiting the graves of his dead colleagues. 
she confesses she lied about her significant other, who has since died. They talk for a while about whether the dead can be grateful or sad because of the actions of the living, and then she says goodbye. Dazai contacts Kunikita, and they meet at the abandoned hospital. He informs Kunikita that he has lured the mastermind behind the incident to the hospital. Taguchi arrives, and Kunikita assumes he is the perpetrator and points a gun at him. Taguchi later clarifies that he hacked into Dazai's account to learn the location, so that he could confront the true mastermind. Suddenly, Taguchi pushes Kunikita out of the way and is shot by Sasaki, the Azure Messenger, whose significant other was the Azure King. Dazai points a gun at her as she comes closer. She explains her motives claiming she wanted revenge for her dead husband. However, she is tired of everything and just wants to die. She says Dazai can't shoot at her because she has lowered her weapon, so Dazai gives his gun on Akuzo, who fires at and kills Sasaki. He did this because he wanted vengeance for his father who was killed by the Azure King. The whole situation makes Kunikita break down, and he sobs in disbelief at what has just occurred. <coughs> no is standing by the street, as though she is waiting for someone. Two men approach her, asking her why she's been standing outside for so long. She spots Daz Ai and approaches him, activating her ability in the streets. One day, Atsushi informs the agency that Daz Ai has gone missing, but they don't take him seriously. Instead, they make jokes about his possible whereabouts. Tanizaki walks into the room and offers to help look into Daz Ai's disappearance. Atsushi is delighted to see him. He apologizes for not being able to do anything when Higuchi and Kudagawa attacked him. Tanizaki informs him that he's doing well thanks to Dr. Yasano, but advises Atsushi not to get injured because of her treatment method. He looks absolutely petrified. Ranpo advises Atsushi to cultivate his sense of danger as a threat was coming in about 10 seconds. Almost immediately, Yasano arrives and greets Atsushi, asking if he's hurt anywhere. She then becomes irritated when he says he isn't. She then invites him to accompany her on a shopping trip, since he's the only one in the room. Atsushi is shocked that his colleagues ditched him as soon as they saw Yasano coming. Atsushi ends up carrying a pile of her purchases at the mall. Along the way, Atsushi notices the strange girl from earlier and exchanges a glance with her. Distracted, he bumps into a man who starts yelling at him because he hid his expensive suit. Dr. Yasano tries to apologize on Atsushi's behalf, but the man refuses. He threatens to report them to their superiors and have them fired. He then insults Dr. Yasano, which enrages her and causes her to break his fingers. On the train, Atsushi apologizes for what happened in the mall. Yasano tells him not to worry about it. She suddenly picks up Atsushi's leg and starts to examine it. She is fascinated by how his leg regenerated without scars or signs of fusion after being amputated by Kudigawa. Atsushi becomes uncomfortable. Yasano advises Atsushi to be cautious at night, explaining that the Port Mafia could launch a surprise attack on him. At that moment, the train conductor announces an impromptu physics experiment, which turns out to be a bombing incident. This kills a few of the passengers. Following this, the conductor calls on Atsushi to surrender himself, explaining that there are more bombs on the train that could kill everyone. Atsushi is terrified and asks Dr. Yasano what he should do. Yasano tells him that he has three options. Turn himself in, escape with some of the passengers, or fight the culprit. Yasano and Atsushi agree to catch the culprit and save the passengers. They split up to find the bombs. As Yasano makes her way to the front of the train, she gets hit by a lemon-shaped grenade and is badly injured, but she takes it by a champ. She meets the bomber, Motojiro Kaji of the Port Mafia, who is surprised she's still alive. Meanwhile, Atsushi goes to the back of the train and runs into the girl he met at the mall earlier. He tries to convince her to get to safety, but she ignores him. She then receives orders over the phone to protect the bomb and eliminate anyone who interferes with the mission. She activates her ability, Demon Snow, which allows her to manifest a demon-like entity that wields a sharp sword. She then uses her sword to strike Atsushi. The girl introduces herself as Kayaka Izumi, stating that she, too, is an orphan, and has murdered 35 people in 6 months. She also says she likes rabbits and tofu. Meanwhile, Yusano is getting her ass handed to her and is on the verge of death due to the repeated lemon bombings. Kaji talks about how he wants to understand death because some aspects of it are reversible in the lab. However, Yusano calls him an idiot for that way of thinking. He then stabs her and leaves her with a few dozen lemon bombs which explode as soon as he leaves the car. Meanwhile, Atsushi is severely injured and unable to fight the girl's ability. He claims she is too strong for him, and that he has no chance of beating her. However, he begins to have flashbacks about what Akutagawa and the people at his orphanage said to him. This motivates him to prove that he deserves to live by defeating Kayaka and saving the terrified passengers. He runs towards her, but because he can't turn to a tiger, he wishes he could use his ability. After the explosion, Kaji returns to see Yusano alive and unhurt. Kaji is terrified and demands to know how she survived multiple bomb explosions. Yusano explains it's all thanks to her ability, Thou Shalt Not Die, that allows her to heal any external wounds, including her own, during near-death experiences. 
She then proceeds to beat Kaji mercilessly. The demon snow strikes at Sushi, but he uses his arms to protect himself. His arm instantly transforms into a tiger paw, allowing him to successfully defend himself against demon snow's attack. At this moment, Kayaka explains that her ability, Demon Snow, killed 35 people, including her father, mother and brother. This makes Itsushi believe she is nothing more than a killing machine with no control over her ability. He reaches for her throat and asks where the bomb is. Kayaka reveals the bomb is strapped onto her. Yasano tells Itsushi that the bomb has a remote detonator that can disarm it. Kayaka reluctantly hands it to him, and Itsushi presses it, only for it to start beeping faster. The voice on her phone tells Kayaka that there is no need to disarm the bomb, and that she should die with the passengers. To stop the bomb, Kayaka throws herself off the train. Claiming she doesn't want to hurt anyone else, however, Atsushi activates his ability, jumps out the train, removes the bomb and saves her. The Kudagawa, the voice instructing Kayaka, disconnects from his phone. He is sad that he lost a valuable asset, but it is what it is. It is then revealed that Dad's eye is chained up in the same room. <laughs> Kunikita and Itsushi interrogate Kayaka at the agency's infirmary. Kunikita demands to know who her superior is. She promises to tell them everything she knows once they get her some boiled tofu from Tachibana Temple. After devouring her food, Kayaka tells them that she was an orphan with nowhere to go before being recruited by the Port Mafia due to her ability. She also reveals that Akutagawa manipulates Demon Snow through a phone. Kunikita shows her the phone and informs her that the battery has been removed. Atsushi is confused and wonders why she didn't simply throw away the phone instead of committing crimes. Kayaka explains that she would have been killed if she had resisted, and if she had left the port mafia, she would have nowhere else to go. Kunikita leaves to make his report to the agency. He instructs Atsushi to hand over the girl to the military police. However, Atsushi is hesitant to give her up without first giving her a chance. Kunikita advises Atsushi not to get involved, explaining that she is wanted by both the police for several murders and port mafia for betrayal. He advises him to think carefully about his situation. Meanwhile, the Kutagawa pays a visit to Dazai in the Port Mafia's torture room. He attacks Dazai with his ability, but Dazai's power cancels it out. He is angry at Dazai, who was once a Port Mafia executive who betrayed the organization. Dazai reminds Akutagawa that he was his former boss, which makes him punch Dazai in the face. Akutagawa further threatens Dazai by telling him that he would take out the agency, capture the Weridiger, and finally execute him. Dazai mocks him, saying his ability is useless, and that his new subordinate is far superior to him as he is a very slow learner. The Kutagawa punches Dazai in the face after this. Atsushi walks back from the Tachibana temple with Kayaka, debating on whether or not to hand her over to the police as Kunikita ordered. He nervously asks her if there's anywhere she wants to go before he makes his decision, and even accidentally implies he wants to take her on a date. Kayaka blushes and agrees. He takes Kayaka all around Yokohama. They go to the stadium, the memorial hall, the museum, the customs headquarters, and the red brick warehouse. They have lunch, and visit the amusement park, and many other places, all at Ashushi's expense, however. Finally, she takes him to the police station and tells him she had a good day and is ready to go. Atsushi reminds her that if she surrenders, she will be executed. Kayaka appears unconcerned, understanding that she will be executed either way by the port mafia if she returns. Atsushi is reluctant, but Kayaka assures him that she has accepted whatever fate awaits her. Suddenly, her shaman stabs Atsushi from behind. The Kutagawa sarcastically thanks Kayaka for leading him to Atsushi, the Weridiger. He explains that he had a transmitter implanted in her that tracked their movements and led him straight to Atsushi. Atsushi is captured, and Akutagawa brings Kayaka back to their base. Back at the agency, everyone is busy due to a minister's staff escort request. Tanizaki reports Atsushi's abduction, but Kunikita and Ranpo argue that they should put their request ahead of rescuing Atsushi. Tanizaki expresses his disappointment by reminding them that Atsushi is one of them. Naomi, who had been uneasy the whole time, brings Fukuzawa to the room to settle matters. The president orders for their current task to be suspended, and to instead get back their newest member immediately. He gives Kunikita three hours to complete the mission. Meanwhile, while Dazai is waiting to be rescued, Joya Nakahara, a port mafia executive and Dazai's former partner, pays him a visit while he is still detained. The two exchange hostile pleasantries before Chuaya questions Dazai about why he allowed himself to be caught, claiming he must have a plan. Dazai denies having any plans and claims he is patiently awaiting his execution. After some heated exchange, Chuaya cuts off Dazai's shackles and demands to fight him. Dazai reveals that he could have escaped any time because he's simply that guy. The agency is working hard to find its sushi, but Rampo remains adamant about helping in their search. He wants to take a random homicide case, but Kenji tells him the president will be unhappy later on. They locate the company owner of the truck, who might know about Itsushi's whereabouts. 
Tanizaki heads to the truck side and infiltrates the building, only to find that the people have been killed. Fukuzawa turns to Ranpo and asks him to use his ability to locate Itsushi. Ranpo is still unwilling to help, so the president says he'll praise Ranpo if he gets the job done. After the president successfully persuades Ranpo to assist, he uses his inner Batman to deduce that Itsushi is on a ship sailing toward the open sea. Fukuzawa throws the agency's high-speed vessel's keys to Kunikita, so he can catch up with the boat. Kunikita then rushes out to save Itsushi. As I and Chuai engage in hand-to-hand -hand combat, with Chuai quickly gaining the upper hand. Chuai mocks Dazai's martial arts skills, and tells him he's no longer good enough for an organization like the Port Mafia. After dishing out some more beatings, Chuai puts a blade to Dazai's throat, and asks why he allowed himself to be captured. Dazai answers that he did it for Itsushi. He was curious about who put the 7 billion yen bounty on Itsushi's head. Chuai mocks his motives and attempts to finish him off. However, Dazai informs Shuaya that he delivered a letter containing Port Mafia's top secrets to the Mafia's upper echelons, which prompted the Mafia's executives to meet. He explains that the letter will be delivered to the public prosecutor's office if he is killed, resulting in the Port Mafia's execution. This surprises Shuaya because as an executive in the Port Mafia, it is a meeting he should have been aware of. He tells Shuaya that if he kills him, the Port Mafia may excommunicate him or execute him. Shuaya is reluctant but lets Dazai go. Dazai then asks about Itsushi, but the Mafia executive explains that Akutagawa is the one leading the operation. As Dazai had earlier asked, Chuaya tells him where the communications records with the source of the Weridiger's bounty are located. Before he leaves, Dazai makes Chuaya talk and walk like a little rich girl. At that moment, Kayaka visits Itsushi inside the cargo room. Itsushi thinks she has come to his rescue, but Akutagawa pulls him out into the open with Rashomon. Akutagawa reveals that he stabbed him earlier to kill him, but he is still alive due to his where did your ability to regenerate. Akutagawa tells Itsushi he's on a smuggling ship carrying weapons and ammunition. Akutagawa applies pressure to Itsushi's injury with his feet, and asks him to die and make way for others. Itsushi is curious about the source of his hatred. Kayaka arrives with a gun and tries to save Itsushi. However, Akutagawa quickly grabs her by the throat, and advises her to continue killing with Demon Snow, which he believes is an ability of death. He explains that if she stops using her ability, her life will have no meaning or purpose. As things turn for the worse, Kayaka manages to set off some explosives, which distracts Akutagawa and gives Itsushi some time to escape. Kunikita, who is on a speedboat, locates Itsushi. He urges Itsushi to jump and leave the girl behind, telling him they cannot always save others and aren't heroes. However, Itsushi seems to be paying no attention to Kunikita's words, and eventually rushes back to save her. He believes that she, like how the agency wants to come in, can still be given a second chance to live a life beyond killing. Akutagawa is about to finish off Kayaka when Itsushi saves her. He puts her aside and challenges Akutagawa to a fight. Finally, they face off. Itsushi transforms his arms and legs into that of a tiger. He attacks Akutagawa at first, but Rashomon's devoured space is nearly impenetrable. Nonetheless, Atsushi's repeated attacks on the devoured space enable him to discover its weakness. Despite Akutagawa's switch to a long-range attack to avoid contact with Atsushi, the latter lands a heavy blow on the Mafia. Akutagawa recalls his training with his former superior, Dazai, in which Dazai stated his skills and ability weren't good enough for the Port Mafia. This caused him to express his hatred for Atsushi. Akutagawa attacks him continuously, but Atsushi's regeneration allows him to survive Rashomon's attacks. Akutagawa recalls Dazai telling him that his new subordinate, Atsushi, is superior to him. Enraged, he attacks Itsushi with all his might and critically injures him. Akutagawa is surprised to see Itsushi still moving after a direct hit. Itsushi is furious that Akutagawa, with his enormous power, still chose to use an innocent girl like Kayaka for the Port Mafia's dirty jobs. Akutagawa tells him that instead of using her, he gave her value and made her worthy of life. Itsushi is angered by this statement and rushes to attack Akutagawa. Akutagawa strikes him again, but this time Itsushi tears apart the Rashomon, leaving Akutagawa stunned. Itsushi uses his tiger's tail to catch Akutagawa midair, despite Akutagawa's attempts to keep him at a distance. As Itsushi makes an attack, Akutagawa uses his devoured space, but Itsushi breaks it and penetrates through, knocking Akutagawa off the ship and into the ocean. Itsushi immediately passes out. Kayaka wakes up and saves Itsushi from the sinking ship. As the vessel explodes, Kunikita catches the two in his boat, seeming impressed with Itsushi. Meanwhile, Dazai hacks into the Mafia's communications records and discovers who placed the bounty on Itsushi. Francis, leader of the guild, perceives how the bounty approach with the Mafia has failed, but he is still optimistic that his group will soon have the promised land. Itsushi is concerned about the agency's potential actions against Kayaka, given that she is wanted by both the police and the Port Mafia. He wonders what he will do if they do not accept her. When he opens the door, he discovers that everyone in the agency is already fawning over her. 
Fukuzawa, the agency's president, informs Atsushi that he was the one who called her over to the agency. Kayaka walks up to him and asks him to let her stay at the agency, claiming she would do anything they asked. Kunikita and Atsushi are opposed. Kunikita claims it is unsafe for her to stay because of the dangers of their work, and the port mafia's ease of finding her at the agency. Atsushi supports him, asking her to run far away from the port mafia. Kayaka tells Atsushi that she is determined to prove to herself that Akutagawa was wrong about her ability to do nothing but kill people. After Asushi pleads on her behalf, Fukuzawa decides to take her in. The rest of the agency appears shocked at his decision. Meanwhile, Akutagawa is comatose after his battle with Atsushi, in addition to a number of internal and external injuries. Fukuchi is troubled as her superior fights for his life. She goes to see the Port Mafia boss, who is disappointed that the mission failed. He questions her suitability for her job in the Mafia. She soon begins to rethink her position in the Mafia as Hiratsu, Tachihara, and Jin implied that she might be exterminated from the Mafia. The Black Lizards reveal that they only obeyed Akutagawa because they feared his great ability. They also suggest that she is now their superior since Akutagawa is incapacitated, but they demand to know if she has what it takes to make them obey her commands. At night, Higuchi is informed that Akutagawa has been abducted by foreign mercenaries, and decides to go and rescue him. The Black Lizard disapproves of her plans, warning her about the dangers of embarking on such a mission. Higuchi doesn't listen as she is determined to rescue her superior. She infiltrates the enemy's base, by throwing a grenade into their facility. She then rushes in, guns blazing, but their number overwhelms her effort. She gets shot in the leg and is unsure she can rescue Kutagawa with the injury. But she doesn't stop there, she storms out of her hiding place and starts shooting. She is instantly shot in the arm and falls to the ground. The enemy surround her and proceed to finish her off. The black lizards come to her aid and completely crush the enemies. Taguchi is stunned that they came to her rescue even after they had criticized her plan. Hiratsu explains that they had to act since their superior was in danger. Higuchi goes to see Kutagawa, who opens his eyes and apologizes to her, to which she tearfully replies that it is her job. At the agency, Kunikita asks Atsushi to take care of Kayaka as he was the one that saved her. At that moment, Minaura, the subordinate got arrested earlier, and his comrade arrived at the agency to discuss a bizarre car explosion case. As they leave, Atsushi is given the case along with Tanizaki. Along Yokohamabashi shopping district, they spot a car that was blown up. Kenji and Atsushi come across several people who seem fond of Kenji. Atsushi concludes that Kenji is famous. They immediately run into another person that appears to be a fan of Kenji. Kenji asks him if he knows anything about the explosion. The man leads them to a possible link between a gang called the Goho Youth Association and the car explosion. Kenji suggests asking the gang if they made the bomb face to face, which is stupid. Atsushi was initially worried, but he eventually folds because of Kenji's honesty. At that moment, Kunikita returns to the agency and asks about Atsushi. Tanizaki informs him that he and Kenji are currently on an investigation. Kunikita is dismayed, claiming that Kenji's methods are too unique, and that he isn't a good role model for someone as inexperienced as Atsushi. Atsushi and Kenji head to the Goho Youth Association's base to ask them about the recent car explosions. Atsushi is shivering at the corner, while Kenji boldly questions the gang concerning the explosion. The gang denies having any relations with the bomb. Kenji believes the man leaves the building with Atsushi afterward. Atsushi tries to persuade Kenji about the gang being responsible for the car explosion, but Kenji takes the group's sincere word as the truth. Once again, Ashushi folds because of Kenji's honesty. As they continue on their way, the gang approaches them and admits that the bomb they built was used to kill an enemy gang member, suggesting that they must have evidence since they left without properly questioning them. Kenji thanks them for telling the truth and tells Atsushi that everyone he interrogates always comes back to tell the truth. Suddenly, he is attacked from behind by a gang member. He falls to the ground but immediately gets up and activates his ability, undefeated by the rain, which grants him superhuman strength to defeat the entire gang single-handedly. Atsushi freaks out and calls Kunikita who in turn yells at him. Kunikita explains that Kenji's power only works when he's hungry. However, when he's full, Kenji goes to sleep. The next day, Kayaka prepares breakfast in bed for Atsushi. He is surprised and asks Dazai what she is doing in his room. Dazai informs him that there are no available rooms in the agency, and that he has to share his with her. Dazai requests that Atsushi write a report on the information he discovered about the person who placed the bounty on him. He tells Atsushi that he discovered from the Port Mafia's communications records that the Guild, a North American organization of gifted individuals, funded the bounty. Kunikita says they are a secret society that uses their unlimited funds and supernatural abilities to plan countless schemes. He wonders what such a group would want with Atsushi. 
Tanizaki barges in and informs them of the arrival of the guild leader, Francis Fitzgerald, and two of his subordinates. Fitzgerald discusses business with Fukuzawa about purchasing the agency. He informs the president that he is not interested in the members of the agency or the building, but instead in the agency's gifted business permit. He also apologizes for the Mafia's incompetence in capturing Atsushi Fitzgerald, explains that they are a secret organization with no official existence, and that he needs it to open his own agency. He notes that he's only doing this because he was unable to bribe officials to give him a permit. He then adds his diamond watch to an open briefcase full of dollar bills, but Fukuzawa refuses and asks him to leave. He says he won't give his company to someone who had dollar bills for brains. As they leave, Fitzgerald warns Fukuzawa that an agency without employees will cease to exist, and he promises to deliver a message in the morning papers. I always get what I want, Fitzgerald continues. Kenji sees the visitors out, but vanishes in the elevator as the group leaves the building. The following day, the agency watches the news and believes Fitzgerald's message was about the overnight disappearance of a seven-story mafia-owned building. They also discover Kenji was missing in Tanizaki, Atsushi, and Naomi look for him. Tanizaki asks Naomi to return to the agency, explaining that it's dangerous for her to accompany them. Naomi assures him she'll be fine. They cross the road and almost immediately, Tanizaki turns back to see that Naomi has disappeared. Tanizaki notices Fitzgerald's companion and demands that she return Naomi. She immediately activates her ability and transports them, along with several other civilians, to a special dimension. She introduces herself as Lucy, an apprentice from the guild. She explains how they can exit her dimension anytime, through a white door, but their memories inside Anne's room would disappear. Moreover, she asks them to play with a gigantic doll-like monster, and, in a game of tag, the frightened civilians escape her dimension, leaving only Atsushi, Tanizaki, and a doctor who is looking for a child named Elise inside the room. Lastly, Lucy tells them the hostages will be freed if they can get the key into the black door. Atsushi and Tanizaki decide to play the game, but Anne immediately captures and imprisons Tanizaki. Anne attacks, but Atsushi manages to dodge the attacks. Lucy begins to give a sad backstory and becomes angry at Atsushi for some strange reason. This was a hatred similar to that of Kurigawa. Atsushi counters Anne and manages to reach the black door, but the key is actually a feint from the very start, there seems to be no way to open the door. Anne gets the upper hand, making Atsushi think he cannot solve the problem without help from Dazai and the others. He is desperate and rushes to the exit, but the doctor stops him and advises him with a game theory strategy to launch a counter-attack on his opponent, encouraging him to save his comrades who had once saved his own life. However, Atsushi is captured towards the black door. Lucy turns to the doctor, who exudes a menacing war that renders Lucy and even Anne frozen in fear. He tells her to look at the door, finding Atsushi resisting the force dragging him into the room. Tanizaki had actually used light snow to create a full store for Atsushi to tie a ribbon on Lucy without her knowing. Atsushi pulls her towards him, and demands that she deactivate her ability if she does not want to be dragged alongside him. If she gets trapped in the door, she would never be able to get out. Atsushi lets go, forcing Lucy to release her ability. The dimension disappears, and they find themselves in the middle of the street. Atsushi tries to approach Lucy, but she runs away in tears. The doctor reunites with Elise, and Kayaka rushes to Atsushi out of worry. As the doctor bids Atsushi farewell, Kayaka fearfully trembles at the sight of the man. The doctor turns out to be Agai Mori, boss of the Port Mafia, to whom his subordinates bow after killing James L, an assassin from the guild. El Mori explains that whoever opposes the Mafia's might shall get annihilated, be it the agency or the guild. Bye, have a great time!